Hi there, welcome to threexpand.com. In today's session, our agenda is to understand database normalization, list the different normal forms, demonstrate first, second, and third normal forms. What is database normalization? This is a simple concept of going through the process of removing duplicates from the database. In other words, reorganizing the database structure. If we say structure, we mean the tables. There are terminologies that we need to watch out for when it comes to the database normalization as a topic. We need to watch out for redundancy and data duplication because this is exactly what we're trying to remove from database tables. We don't want redundant data. What do we mean by redundant data? Data that is sitting there doing nothing. Or it could be, in terms of data dupl duplication, data that has been duplicated. We have an existing uh, data in the database, and then we have the same copy of the data again. So this is what we're looking at to remove by database normalization. What are the types of normal forms that we have? Generally speaking, there are six normal forms. But in the industry, you will find in most cases that there are the, the database has been normalized to the third normal form. So we have first, second, third, fourth, fifth, and sixth normal forms. But in this session, we'll look at how to normalize a database table from the first to the second and third normal form. Why? Because there are rules that we need to follow step by step to get to a state that we can say our table is being normalized. You cannot get to third normal form without having gone through first, second, and third. And that's what we mean by step-by-step -step process. And it's a process. You can't just jump. You can't just say, oh, I want my table to be in third normal form and just say, hey, we have it. No, you have to go through first, second, and third normal form. Now let's let's take a look on a, at an example of a table that is not normalized at all. On this table, if you look at the department column, we have sales, we have management, we have sales again, we have management, we have sales again, and that's affecting the head of department because we have to repeat the names again: Matt, Hassan, Matt, Hassan, Matt. So you see. If you look at the table again, we, we have a, a, another column there, department region, where there is repetition, northwest, central. And if you look at it closely, you'll see that all we have is just northwest and central. But just because we have, to, we have other things that have been repeated, it will cause other things to be repeated. And eventually, we'll have a, a database table that is full of repetition and data that is redundant. What problem does this present to us? Number one, wastage of disk space. We would have, the, the more data you put in the table, the more disk space you're using. And imagine if this was 10 million rows. That is proportional to the space of the disk that you're using. Why do you want to waste disk when you can do uh, uh, normalize your table to eventually come to a place, a place where you don't have duplicate data and use less less disk. Another problem that this presents to us is data inconsistency. Now, think about this for a moment. If we had 10 million rows on this table, and let's say the head of department for sales, Matt, resigned, okay, and we have another person Let's say, for example, David, that is now heading sales. We've had 10 million rows on this table, and Matt has been the name that's been repeated over and over and over for every employee name that is in this sales department. Now that David has taken over, that means if Matt has had over 10 million records, on this table, we have to update all the 10 million records for our new head of department. What if mistakenly you did not update two rows that should have been updated from Matt to David? What that means is we're beginning to have data inconsistency. And this is one of the problems that 
database normalization six to resolve. Now we have another problem which is DML queries taking a long time to complete, especially on tables that have millions of records, large tables. DML, we understand DML to be delete, update, insert, merge or select. And if you have to perform any of these DML queries on a large table which has redundant data that's been multi that's been re repeated over and over and over again, our queries will be taking a long, long, long time to complete. Now, going into first normal form, what are the rules? There are rules that we need to satisfy for a table to be in first normal form. The first rule is each column must contain atomic values. What do we mean by atomic value? Any value that cannot be divided any further is atomic. And so, to say that we have a table that has atomic values, let's, take, let's have a look at, a, at an example. This, let's assume we have a table like this, department and employee name. And then employee name column, we have James, Joe, and Esther, the first record. The employee name column here is not atomic because each of the values there can be divided further. So James is an atomic value, Joe is an atomic value, Esther is an atomic value. Each of them should have been in separate columns and not in just one column like that. So to satisfy this rule, we'll be tempted to, to, to have something like this. Repeating groups where we would have employee name one, employee name two, employee name three. Now going back to what we have up there, think for a moment how you can possibly select, insert, update and delete one employee data from a structure like this, this one right here. How would you do it? If you wrote a select statement to say select from this table where employee name is James, you you confuse the database engine because in that column we do not have just only James, we have Joe and Esther. So since that query, this, since the structure of the table does not satisfy that statement, it won't return any data to you. But because you know that data that data exists on the table, you have problems and start thinking, what's going on? Why don't why am not have why am I not having my data returned back to me? It's simple, it's just because you have a column that has records that are not atomic. So an attempt to resolve it takes us to a, another problem, which takes us to the second rule that says no repeating groups. We do not want repeating groups. So for a table to be in first normal form, this right here is wrong. You cannot have employee name one, employee name two, employee name three. It's just wrong. Now the third rule says identify each record uniquely with a primary key. So to have our unnormalized data to be in first normal form, we just bring the same data back and give it an employee ID column and make it the primary key. So that guarantees uniqueness across it. And then we have our salary, we have our annual salary, department, head of department, region, everything. They are all atomic. There are no repeating groups. So first normal form is satisfied. That takes us to our second normal form. The first rule is it must be in first normal form. That's what we just done. So we, we're sure that our table is, is in first normal form, then we can proceed to the second rule that says redundant data to be relocated to a separate table. So you have to look into your table and say which one is redundant. If you look at the department column, we have sales, we have management, we have sales again, we have management, we have sales that we have, we're having redundant data in there. Similarly, we have head of department, Matt, Hassan, Matt, we have redundant. So we need to move it to another table. So database normalization entails creating more tables, breaking up a single table into multiple tables. And so we'll end up having something like this.
So now we have two tables. We have employee ID, employee name, gender, salary, annual salary for our first table and the other table, department, head of department, department region. But if you look at the second table, because we just broken it, it's going to present to us another problem. And what's the problem? It is not in first normal form. In first normal form, we should have a primary key and each of them must have, be atomic. So to satisfy this, then we make this new table to be in, in second normal form, in first normal form by giving it a department ID. Now, the third rule says create a relationship between the tables. Now that we have two tables, we need to establish relationship between them. And that's where relationship begins to come to play. So now we have our employee ID. So this is our first table here. We have our employee ID and department ID. So the employee ID is the primary key. The department ID is the foreign key of this table. So that means these two tables now are in second normal form. So this is how to create a, a, a table to be in second normal form. That takes us to the third normal form. For a table to be considered in third normal form, it must be in first and second normal form. That's what we just done. So we're, we're satisfied, we're happy, we know that our tables are in first and second normal form. So we then go into the second rule and see if we can satisfy it. What does the second rule say? It says all the columns must be fully dependent on the primary key. Now this is a part where we need to think carefully. It might be confusing, but it's really simple. We just need to understand the dependency and be sure that every column depends fully on the primary key. If it's not, we have a solution. It's either we move the table to another table, we move the, the, the column that is not depending on, on primary key to another table, or we remove it completely. Now let's have a look at this table and focus more on the annual salary. Annual salary is dependent on employee ID, yes, because 396,000 is the annual salary for employee ID 1 which happens to be James. So that's fine. It's depending on the employee ID. Because if you look at 660,000, you can be rest assured that that is not the annual salary for James. It is the annual salary for employee ID 2, who happens to be Ptolemy. So annual salary is dependent on primary key. That is fine. But the rule says it must be fully dependent on the primary key. It shouldn't depend on any other thing. But if you look carefully, it is also dependent on salary column. Salary column multiplied by 12 will give us 396,000 for James. So the fact that the value in annual salary is dependent on employee ID, which is the primary key, and salary makes this a no-no. It is not satisfying the normal form. And for that reason, we have two options. It's either we move it to another table. Yes, we can move it to another table and we satisfy this rule here. But there's another general rule that you don't keep computer columns on database tables. Why? Because you will be wasting disk space to keep a computer column on a table because this is something that you can easily just get out on the fly. When you write a select statement, you can easily multiply salary by 12 and then on the fly have another column to give you your annual salary. So you shouldn't be keeping this kinds of data permanently on the, on the, on the table because it will be wasting disk. So doesn't satisfy some rules, so the decision in this case will be to completely remove annual salary. So by then, we will now have another table which have now satisfied the third normal form. Now let's have a look at the other table. 
that we created before. Employee, the department ID, we have department, head of department, and department region. Now, there is a general rule again for third normal form that when you look at the table, if anything spots to you, and you can easily tell that mm, this shouldn't be on this table because it just doesn't look right, then you need to follow through with that thought, that feeling, and think deeply about it. So if I'm looking at this, I can see department ID, I can see department, I can see head of department, I can say that yes, this belongs together. But looking at department region, just looking at it alone can tell me mm, region is different from department. So it shouldn't be part of this table. But that's just a feeling. We need some more concrete reason to prove that it shouldn't be on this table. Now. That concrete reason should be followed from the rule that says all columns must be fully dependent on the primary key. In this case, what we have is we have the department depending on the department region. But it should be the other way around. Department region should be dependent on department ID because sales is in northwest, not northwest in sales. Management is in central, so we can, the management can, the company can decide later on in the future and say, okay, we don't want our sales department to be in Northwest anymore, we want it to be in central. But we can't say Northwest should no longer be in sales, you know, that's not possible. So in this case, we can see that department region is not satisfying this rule, it is not depending on department ID, so what we do is we just break it out. And then breaking it out, remember, it always presents a new challenge for us, which is department region now is not in first normal form, it's not in second normal form, how can it even be in third normal form? So to put it in, to make it satisfy the third normal form, then we have to break it again and say, okay, let's give it its own primary key column so that it can be in first normal form and second normal form and third normal form. And ultimately, put relationship between them. So if you look at the table on the left, we have department ID, we have region ID. Now we have relationship established between these two tables. So that satisfies the third normal form. So if you, if you look at the fully normalized structure now, we would have, if you look at the before and the after, now we have three tables created from the unnormalized table. I believe this session has been quite informative for you. And see you in the next session. Bye.